What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic and I'm pretty happy today because I'm finally revisiting an old project and uh, that is of course how do you launch barrels and uh, pipe pieces. And the way I've always done this in the past is use, you know, what I've sort of dubbed as the flipper glitch. I don't know if other people have had names for it. Um, you know, a lot of people call it the controller glitch. But basically, you have a controller with a ton of bearings that are all told to go to a direction. But before they move, you lock the controller up and then you release it all simultaneously. And that causes the barrel to go super far distances. And I've always used this to make catapults, so obviously this is Bronco, which you can see there, it's kind of jammed through. But this is really the first place where I've used it, and then I've also used it on like the Mega Catapult, which had, you know, it would fire blocks over a thousand range and distance of various objects. And, uh, and now, I've been introduced to a better way to use it. And so, one of you guys mentioned in a stream to go check out a guy by the name of Al Magma, and I'll, I'll post his link in the description below. I encourage you guys to go check him out. He's a very, very small YouTuber. He's just starting out in some scrap mechanic stuff, but he's got some really, really cool ideas, and I got to chatting with him in his comments a little bit about some of his ideas. In one of his videos, he showed an idea, which is basically the flipper glitch, but turned sideways. If you turn it into a sort of, you know, crossbow type mechanism, slingshot mechanism, you can actually launch a pipe piece relatively far distances. And, uh, so, so we're just going to show you how that all works here. So, um, well, I guess there's no real easy way to show you this without actually showing you this. So I made two versions of it. He has, he has a couple versions of his own. He was originally launching these three by one pipe pieces. So I made one that also launches three by one pipe pieces. And, uh, and then I made one that launches barrels because, you know, my favorite thing to launch is these sort of slug barrels. So we'll just show you how these work. Now, this three by one is a fully automated seven shot. Now, it doesn't always fire. Sometimes it kind of misfires, but, you know, we'll get right into that. So, it's really easy to load. You just hit this switch. That opens up the load bar there. And then we just attach some blocks onto this. And we just load up our seven shots in a clip. Delete that set of blocks. And we'll just, uh, we'll paint these nice and yellow here. Just so we can really see that. Now, we close this off. And then we just, uh, let it fire. And it'll go through the sequence. So, you can see there it primes. Release the circuit. Now the first two shots are dry because it has to actually get the, the bullets into position and the first two bullets don't have a slot there. So that's kind of a little bit of a flaw with this design. I should probably fix that. You see now it's loaded and that one, that was a misfire. I just shot out the side. That was useless. This is scrap mechanic. There are some issues, but you can see there it loads the shell. The sensors detect the shell and there goes the shell. So that one worked pretty well. See there you can see it piston jams it down, loads the shell, fires the shell. Go to the next one. See that one? Oh, see this, this, sometimes this little swing arm doesn't, yeah, just thanks, thanks. Sometimes it doesn't move enough distance. Normally it does, um, but these sensors kind of activate it. And the idea is that it moves, see, see, it, sometimes it just activates the sensor too quickly. Come on, load that thing. There we go. So I need to really tune this mechanism. I tried it with suspension originally. Um, and that really wasn't, it didn't work out very well. The suspension was kind of really glitchy and it just jammed all the pipe pieces together. They aren't strong enough to resist each other, so the suspension just kind of broke it. But I might revisit that, that was a little terrible shot there. The lid here that helps seal the bullets down really helps in keeping it consistent. Perfect. And then you can see there, we can actually just hit this switch here, turn off the mechanism. And now you can see it'll retract the arm, open up the reload. And we can fire it again. Just like that. Break that. As you can see, it's actually kind of nice. It is very lag free. Um, I would like to redo this clip design, but the one thing I like about this clip is it almost needs uh, a little bit more detail to it because I'd like to have another, let's say, arm sort of like this to completely seal the clip in. And that would allow this to fly upside down because I think for this one, I would love to mount this sort of r gun into like a plane or something or something that flies and really gives you the ability to aim it. But, you know, we can just load it up there. Again, that first shot's dry. Now, the, the biggest pain with this design is, of course, the time between shots. Now, the time between shots is completely dictated by this sequence here. And it's actually because of the time it takes to prep this mechanism. So, oh goodness, it jammed up. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we've got a, we've got an issue here. We're, we're jammed up in the side here. So the nice thing is when it when it does get jammed up like that, you can just spawn it on the lift and then take it off the lift and it will unjam itself. Of course, you have to reload everything, but um, I had it welded to the ground, so that was kind of, oh, hello, thank you. 
I have welded to the ground, so that was a bit of a pain, but once you remove it from the welding, it isn't too bad. Now, of course, if I mounted this into, let's say, a plane or something, uh, and then you'd have to take the whole plane on the lift, but it's, it's not too big a deal. It doesn't jam very often, but uh, you can see there, we're not actually welded to the ground right now. It's completely disconnected, but it will bounce a little bit, but overall it can still shoot. So that, that does lead me to believe that you could mount this into some kind of a vehicle, and, uh, and it would have some relative success. But again, thanks to Al Magma for showing this idea. It's really cool when you see other people who come up with just neat ideas like this, because I had tried to do something like this a while ago, and the reason it failed is I was only using a single catapult arm. And so what happens is you see when it collapses like that, it kind of screws up. But if you use two, they collapse identically, and so the forces kind of counteract each other, and you don't end up with too much of a, an issue. And it actually shoots a projectile relatively straight and pretty far. Now... You do need a fair amount of, obviously, backspace here, so it doesn't exactly make for a compact cannon design, um, but it definitely works really well. And you can see that we're just unloading those barrels. Are we, are we out of ammo? Oh, we're out of ammo. Okay. So we'll just turn this one off. I thought, you know, the biggest problem with this is it needs to be more rapid fire. It doesn't, it doesn't shoot quick enough, and of course the reason is because of this priming mechanism where it has to flip up and then shoot forward and then flip back down, and that's what launches the barrel. So it's three controller steps, and no matter what, three controller steps has a little bit of a fixed time to it. So I thought, well, let's make version 2.0. Let's stack two of them with one barrel, and you know, we'll just, we'll just have something like this, and we can make it so that the two barrels can rotate in and of each other. As soon as you jam it, it works, but as soon as you rotate the object, it you can see there, it releases early and it's not supposed to. And uh, it's actually just glitching right through the pipe, so it seems you can't move the platform that it's on while it's, while it's glitch? I don't know, I, I think, or you can't rotate it, but for some reason, it does the exact same sequence, but this one, you can see there, it primes, and it works fine there on the top, but as soon as you try and do the one on the bottom, and rotate while it's primed. You can see there the prime gets all out of sync. So you can see it primes, but then it gets all messed up as it rotates and it, it doesn't make sense. And then it fires kind of out of sync and screws up the barrel. And so I decided, you know what? If you can't go faster, which which sucks because it would have been nice. So I, maybe I'll revisit this. Maybe just do two barrels side by side with one common ammo tray. Um, but I decided to go bigger. And so this is, you know, the, the ultimate barrel launcher. And this one's pretty much the exact same as that one, except it shoots big barrels as ammunition instead of small barrels. So we just put in a clip like this, and we just prime it up with a full clip, like so. Holds five rounds. Now you can fit more in here, so we just do this, and uh, we get in the seat. One, whoops, I didn't want to fire there. Okay, hold on. There we go, fine. All right, so we press two here. That opens up the gate. Three, we'll push it over with that piston. That's like the first time that's actually happened. So, okay, so we'll just go back here. Normally they go in perfectly straight. There we go, like that. I don't know why that one didn't. Then you press two here to seal that in, loading the chamber. Now, of course, you can come back in here and reload your extra ammo. And I mean, you could extend this clip up high vertically. I don't know how much higher you can go. This is a gravity load clip, but then it has this small little piston here, um, but it is all manual control. So you can see there we've got a barrel primed and loaded so we're just gonna tap one you don't have to tap hold it or anything like that and then boom shoots the barrel then we go two again open that up three to push the barrel in three to build it back two to close it tap one again oh that one kind of misfired a little bit I found it was very critical to actually close the gun chamber with a controller like that. I find that helps keep the barrel nice and aligned and nice and straight. Holy crap, the bounce on that one. But it keeps the barrel nice and aligned and nice and straight when you're uh, when you're loading it up. So I wasn't sure again what I want to do with this. It does kind of look like, you know, one of those like silicone plungers. Oh, uh, that was the wrong button there. Oh, perfect. Just all out of sequence here. Okay, good. Just like that. Just like that. Uh-oh. There we go. Perfect. Something like this, of this size, would uh, be cooler to maybe mount to a ship or something like that. Like a really big hover ship. I, I really don't know. Definitely going to try and mount this one to something smaller. But if you guys have suggestions for what you think I should do with these cannons, I'm not going to post them on the workshop just yet. Um, I do want to actually mount them into a vehicle first and maybe clean them up a bit. 
and make some like you know fully automatic mechanisms but if you guys have any ideas for what you want to do make sure you post those in the comments down below um and hit that like button hit that subscribe button if you haven't already It's not as long range as a catapult, but definitely the, the straight shot and the accuracy of it really just makes it super, super awesome. And like, look at that. That is dead straight. Look at how accurate that is. Just fire it up. Until, of course, it jams and gets a little bit less distance, but overall, just super accurate. So this will definitely be the next thing to automate, but again, I want to mount this into something, so please post your suggestions down below uh, and hit those buttons, and that's just awesome. Alright, we're going to do one more clip here. Amazing. So obviously we could tilt this up for a little bit more range, uh, but I'm not terribly concerned. This was more of just the testing ground, see how it is. And you see there, that one's a little bit inaccurate. The other thing too, though, is if uh, the more that this gets tilted, the less accurate the gravity loader would be. The gravity would have a lot more difficult to time of rolling the barrels down. Oh, uh, that was a that was a jam fire again. Still in the still in the chamber. There we go. Perfect. So the nice thing is the piston does go the full length of the chamber. So if it does jam up, this barrel one seems to jam a lot less than the pipes. I think it's because the barrel just has a much bigger hitbox and so it's a lot harder for it to get jammed into the concrete but definitely super accurate you can see there but make sure you guys you post your suggestions for uh what what you want to see this happen in the comments down below and uh make sure you hit that like button hit that subscribe button and as always i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i'll see you all next time